Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Sayyid Shayan Shah and I'm a postgraduate resident general surgery. Today I'm going to talk about the advanced trauma life support primary survey. So first we will discuss what is advanced trauma life support and how it is defined. It said that the simultaneous diagnostic as well as therapeutic activities intended to identify the and threat limb and life threatening injuries beginning with the most immediate one as they say the golden hour what's the golden hour the first hour after traumatic injury when the emergency treatment is most likely be to successful so who devised these protocol these ATLS protocols these were first devised by James K. Steiner Paul Colicat in 1978 they were both the American College uh, surgeons affiliates so what are the program goals the program goals are that advanced trauma life support course supplies its participant with the safe and reliable method for image treatment of injured patient and the basic knowledge should be how to assess a patient condition rapidly and accurately how to resuscitate and stabilize whether the patient needs or exceed the resource of a facility or capability of the provider arrange appropriately for a patient enter or intra hospital transfer or ensure the optimal care is provided uh, and that level of care does not deteriorate at any point during the elevation so why the need for ATL is uh, because uh, this graph shows the worldwide mortality, uh, global injury mortality by cars. So, the most people they die globally are due to the road traffic accident, that is 23%. The second most is due to the uh, suicide, 15%, 11% due to homicide, 7% due to drowning, 6% due to fires and falls, and some other causes. 21 person so all these cases uh, when happens or whether tra road traffic accidents or homicides or suicide or drowning they present to the emergency department or they come across to the emergency team so they do need a protocol uh, to be handled properly so we can save their lives so that's why ATLS protocols were uh, devised uh, for them the concept the concept is that they treat the greatest threat to the life first never allow the lack of definite diagnosis like first we have to diagnose and then treat no in ATLS pro there is no such a concept this concept is for the indoor and outdoor patients they present to us with the common disease but uh, in the accident patient uh, and the inpatient presented to the emergency with the trauma they don't need uh, first to be diagnosed and then to be treated. Thus, the mnemonic that uh, uh, we mostly use is A, B, C, D, E. Mean that first we have, whenever we come across a trauma patient, first we have to look for the airway, the restriction of cervical spine motions. Second, we look for breathing. Third, we assess the circulation and we stop any ongoing bleeding. The fourth is that we uh, limit the disability or neurological status of the patient and with we expose, ex, uh, get the full exposure and the patient and environment. Uh, we sit the, or shift the patient to the environment that is safe both for him and for us. So what are the basic of ATLS? The basic of ATLS are first we preparation, then we triage, we do the triage, uh, then we do the primary survey which include A, B, C, D, E with the simultaneous assistation as well. After completing the primary sur survey and resuscitation of the patient, we do the secondary survey. After doing the secondary survey, we monitor and elevate and secondary and, uh, adjuncts, and then we transfer the patient to definite care. So, what is triage and what are the goals of triage? The process of catalyzing victim or mass casualty based on their needs for treatment and resource available. So we have to elevate the patient or if you come across a mass casualty 
so we divide them uh, on the basis of the treatment they need and we also divide them according to the resources available to us so the goal of triage is that to prevent avoidable deaths uh, uh, ensure proper initial uh, treatment with minimal time frame and avoid misusing assets on hopeless cases if the patient is branded his heart is pumping or he is having massively like injured and there is no chance for him survival and we are like uh, we have limited resources and we are using that resources on that hopeless patient so that's the concept of uh, ties that we have to give treatment first to those that we can save easily so now we are going to discuss the primary survey which consists of the a b c d e protocols uh, we have to assess or any clinician have to assess all the air, airway breathing circulation disability in the 10 second assessment by identifying the self and asking the patient for his her name and asking what happened so whenever the uh, a complete sentence is spoken by the patient tell us that airway is patterned breathing is intact and good cerebral circulation so whenever we come across a trauma patient we introduce ourselves and we ask the patient their name if he is able to complete the sentence we mean that a b c d are good failure to respond to these questions such as obviously abnormalities in airway breathing or circulation or disability so we will start assessing them the primary survey airway maintenance with restriction of cervical spine motion breathing and ventilation circulation with the hemorrhage control disability we will discussing these one by one so how we do airway manage why first in the algorithm why first we have to manage airway loss of airway can result in the death in less than three minutes so if a patient has to die in less than three minutes if the airway is blocked then we do need to give uh, priority first to the airway management as the prolonged hypoxia mean inadequate perfusion and organ damage airway assessment initial airway assessment wall Elevating for air obstruction of potency, which can be determined by if the patient is snoring, rider, drooling, hoarseness, edema, and facial trauma. So we can say that the airway is compromised. Spinal cord production, how, protection. How we do it? The general principle is that protect the entire spinal cord until injury has been excluded. So whenever we call, uh, come across a trauma patient, we have to protect this spinal cord until and unless we diagnose that there is no injury to the spine so it's a basic rule that you have to um, protect the spine uh, we have to uh, apply the rigid cervical spinal cord to cervical spine and rigid board to the thoracolumbar spine what are the clinical first treatment immobilization before the diagnosis you have to immobilize return head to the neutral position do not apply traction uh, diagnosis of spinal cord injury should not proceed this station as we we, we we don't have to go for the spinal cord injury diagnosis before presentation we have to resuscitate the patient it come in the secondary survey that we have to look for the spinal cord injuries motor vehicle crashes and falls are most commonly associated with the spinal cord injuries airway management maintenance of the airway patency uh, suctioning of the secretion chin lift and jaw thrust maneuver uh, oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airway then the airway support we'll be discussing them one by one first we do the chin lift maneuver this is like we put one hand on the forehead and other on the chin and we lift uh, slightly lift up and other person uh, hold cer cervical spine and so we can protect the spine as well as uh, perform the maneuver then there is the jaw thrust maneuver in which we uh, put this hand on the angle of mandible and slightly push the jaw in forward direction uh, if we have the airways if the tongue is falling back we apply these airway which are called goodell's airway and they come in the different sizes these are the different sizes that size 15 size 4 size 3 and 2 and so on like according to the age then we give the air uh, way support simple mass oxygen we apply if the patient is not breathing properly or he is not maintaining saturation then we apply the non rebreathable mass utilized for facial trauma or chronic airway limitation if still the patient is not maintaining saturation then we go for the back wall mask this is the back wall mask we hear uh, this is the oxygen reservoir where 
this is the oxygen line oxygen connector tubing this is an plating wig and this is the mask we applied um, airtight to the face and then we um, give this uh, to 